We're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Suleimana Konde, a public affairs analyst, will join us on a first conversation as we look at the concerns of Serap. Now, in a letter signed by Serap Deputy Director Kola Waleo Luadare, the organization has expressed serious concerns about the shrinking civic space in the country. Some state governors and government institutions are reportedly using Section 24 of the Cyber Crime Act and other repulsive laws to crack down on anyone seeking to assess their human rights and media freedom. Now, it's interesting to note that the economic community of West African state ECOWAS court had ruled in July 2020 that Cyber Crime Act violates citizens' right of expression. While describing it as vague, arbitrary, and unlawful, they also ordered the Nigerian government to repel or amend the provision. Meanwhile, Section 24, Subsection 1 of the Act made it an offence to send a message via a computer system which was grossly offensive, pornographic, or of an indecent or meaningful character, or to send a message or cause any such message or matter to be sent, or to send a message knowing it to be false for the purpose of um, discrediting the parties involved. I mean, that's just that part of the Cyber Crime Act. Now, Serbia is urging President Mohamed Buhari to send an executive bill to the National Assembly to repel the provision of Section 24 of the Cyber Crime Act on the offense of insulting or stalking public officials online by ensuring that the de deletion of the provision uh, from the Act as ordered by the ECOWAS Court. Now, Sarah, apart from that, is also urging the president to direct Abubakar Malami, who is the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, to withdraw all charges of insulting or stalking public officials online against activists, critics, and journalists, ensure that they are released from unlawful detention and pay adequate compensation to those who have faced unfair prosecution on the basis of unlawful provision. Meanwhile, there's also an instruction to the president that Mr. Lai Mohammed, Minister of Information and Culture and National Broadcasting Corporation, or commission by the way, to immediately reverse the arbitral and lawful fine of 5 million naira imposed on channel television for purportedly violating the NBC code in the program with the Labour Party vice presidential uh, candidate, Dati Baba Ahmed. Now we have our guest joining us, Suleiman Akande. Thank you so much. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. I mean, so let's quickly get to the crux of the matter. First, I'd like us to, you know, look at the judgment. What do you make of the court order, uh, you know, by ECOWAS community asking the reversal, saying that, uh, you know, the section of that particular criminal cyber, cyber, uh, criminal cyber act it's uh, in controversy to the fundament, fundamental human rights of the people. Yeah, um, my take is this. Um, as a democracy, and if we really want to get, we've come a long way getting to this particular position, we must make sure that nothing in any way or in any language stifles media freedom. Media has played a very huge role in the sustenance of our, of, our, of our democracy up to this day. And at least we're not running a guerrilla republic or running um, the military rule again. And people have always argued that the media and the civil society are the fourth arm of government. So anything that stifles the media space is something any lover of democracy should um, not be happy with. But at the same time, we must also understand that um, regulation of the media space is not out of this world, even in the advanced democracy of this world. Media or any other human endeavor is always regulated. And if we say that these, if these mediums are not regulated, we will be sliding into anarchy. So well, this is a two-way thing. That is just like a human right is a two-way is a, is a, is a two thing. That is wherever your own right stuff, another person right uh, start um, from there. So uh, my take is this. Instead of repealing that particular hat, we should rather go for amendment, whereby we should have a case based on the merit. Even some people have argued that 
NBC should not be a judge in their own matter. Rather, media houses that contravene the uh, broadcasting code or the ethics of journalism should be charged to court and from the court should make the pronouncement, not NBC. But people have also argued that no, NBC have the um th that power or act in the law to um give sanctions to any boy any um media house that contravene their the act. So to me personally, I just felt that I've been a victim of uh, media bullying before, and I believe that as human, we should find a middle ground to uh, tackle this particular issue. That is, media should not be stifled, and at the same time, we should preach responsible journalism. I, I, I understand, you know, your thoughts uh, generally on this, but I'm asking that what's your position? Because what Serap is talking about is making reference to the uh, court ruling or judgment that was given by the ECOWAS court in 2020, which has said that uh, it has described that section of the Cybercrime Act as unconstitutional, unlawful, when you juxtapose it to the laws where Nigeria is part of a treaty, uh, were part of that particular treaty, you know, in the international community. So I'm asking, what do you make of this? Yeah, cyber stalking. Personally, if you ask for my personal, personal opinion, public uh, officials, I, I also have a personal life they live, you understand? And um, cyber stalking, at least, comes to their personal life. I'm not, uh, you know, my, I'm not, I, I won't say it's good to allow people have their way when they attack public officials unjustly. But if it has to do with things that, this to, that has to do with their discharge, of duty as a public official, I think it's a work on development. That's why we have case of um, investigative uh, journalists at least looking into how public of officials um, discharge their public duties among other things. So for me, it's not a total repeal of that law. Rather, we should go into amendment of it. I'm not for the total repeal of that of that particular law. Rather, we should look at which of part of the law that abuse people in that infringe on people's personal human rights. And, uh, and all that is. That's my take. No, so, but um, if you look at Article 9 of the African Charter on Human Rights and People's Rights and Article 19 of International uh, Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which Nigeria is also, uh, you know, a party to, is a, I mean, it's a state party to, uh, they're saying that these particular laws, our laws, are contravening uh, human rights. So, at what point do we even get to a part where we formulate laws that contravene, uh, you know, treaties that we belong to, that we are previewed to, and what their state? Now, and if you belong to a certain organization, and this is what they are stipulating, and there's been a judgment, and the fact that uh, you are also practicing, you are a member to this, doesn't it, you know, um, doesn't it just reflect the fact that we're just a lawless people and we have no regard for the rule of law? whether or not it is internally or externally? Uh, not at all. No law or treaties are made in isolation. Every laws and treaties have a purpose they are supposed to serve. So I'm looking at those and uh, the Article 9 of those treaties that you just, uh, you just mentioned now. It protects, um, that is, uh, media houses and... Um, Journalist no, it, it is it, no. I, I think that you're not even getting this entirely, uh, Suleiman. It is not about media houses. It's about the fact that the human rights, fundamental human rights. When we talk about humans, we're not first of all before we're a human being. Before we're journalists. Before you become a, an institution, you're a human being. And Sarah is acting on the fact that if we already belong to, you, we have agreed or we're party to some treaty. Yes. And there's been a lot of ruling that's been given. They're saying that this contravenes it. You're saying that you have limited the people, not necessarily pinpointing to say journalists, a set of people, or uh, uh, clergymen, or whatever it is. You're talking about the fact that you have fundamental human rights. And fundamental human rights is not, you know, premised on uh, a certain position or profession entirely. I think that that's where we're getting this conversation wrong. It's not about no, the I fact that it's targeted I, 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 at I, I, journalists. It's, it's targeted I, at individuals in a free society, in democracy in a democratic setting and again i ask you 
the fact that we belong to a treaty because i mean you say that these laws are not formulated in isolation and so before we yeah. are members of these i'm not sure that this happened outside of our consent we had representative we were, we're also a party to all of this so when you become a party to a certain thing and then you come back home and then you have different laws that contradict what you you have actually agreed to does this really make sense in any way no, not at all. If you get my point, I'm, I'm for this. And I said earlier, if you look at my introduction, I say any laws or any heart that's stifled on the media should, I'm not, I won't be by a party to that, I should be looking to. Well, my point is this. Why we have um, a, a fundamental human right? And I told you, human right is a two-way traffic. That is, wherever your own, uh, wherever your own right um, start, maybe someone right um, also stop there. Someone used to say this, that you have the right to raise your hand into the air. But the moment that your hand is touching my own nose, I also have the right to complain. So if we're talking of human rights, it's a two-way thing. The public officials and everyone you are talking here, they are also human, just like the other person that is using the um, that of serve the law. So if this law works for everyone, either the um, the victim or the perpetrators of this uh, abuse of uh, human rights, it doesn't it does it does it doesn't matter yet. My point is this, um, uh, either the, the, the right here, when this right works, we must also look at other things into consideration. That is why the issues of media, uh, media stifling comes in. That is, if um, um, the media as a body also have a responsibility to make sure that any statement, and I think that's the first thing that comes in, that is anything, any right that threatens our national security, that is, that right becomes a secondary. For example, if you have someone that comes to use a platform to incite or eat up or a, a, a polity, and I think the authority also have the right to also call whoever is doing that into action. So that's my point. So it's not about, uh, my point is not really on the media or anybody, but any right that also stifled on other people's rights should also be, be checked. So media or either media, either clergy or whoever it is. So any right that threatens our national security, that a particular right should also be checked. So we are a party to the ECOWAS Treaty, no doubt. We also have our own internal laws of solving a mechanism. If you look at um, so, other advanced so, democracies in the world, be it America, UK, so, so they I, also have... I'm also mechanism. asking you, Suleiman, right. I'm also asking yeah. you, you also need to understand that we're members of the ECOWAS because, uh, you know, in the course of saying, hey, we need to understand the rights and what have you, is the fact that, let's, let's even take, for example, when we had the cash scarcity or the redesign, uh, you know, the, uh, the policy redesign, uh, you know, conversations going on. So we said, let's redesign the narrow notes. And then there were, we had the issue of, um, uh, you know, cash non-availability and what have you going on in our space. Then you had the conversation where people said the Supreme Court had given a ruling. And I'm sure that you probably were part of this conversation that the Supreme Court had given a ruling, that this ruling should be respected, that the Supreme Court is supreme. So whether or not people are pleased with the judgment or the outcome of the Supreme Court, because it is a court of law, that, you know, rules should be, ex, you know, be respected. So then again, we're saying that if the um, Echoes Court had ruled since 2020, and asking the Nigerian government, because that's, that's the premise on which Serap is basing their conversational argument on, that there should be an implementation of the ruling of the ECOWAS court. So we're not saying that whether the details of it, whether people should not respect rights or another person's rights, is being ignored. But the fact that the court had given a ruling since 2020 in July, and it is yet to be respected, which they have stated categorically that you should delete or amend it and that has not been respected and we're in 2023 so what does this speak of the nigerian government so so yes you are saying that yeah you're in support that it should not be you know deleted it should be that but the echo is called there's been a ruling and that has not been implemented because we've had cases where governors of different state have sat on that particular act they are still using it you know to hone on people and act in different dimensions and then the court had given a ruling. We are part of the ECOWAS community. Does it even make any sense that we have no regard for the rule of law whatsoever, whether the laws that we make or the laws that we're party to? No, that's, you've just mentioned it now. 
This no, 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 no. I have met, no, excuse me, sir. I had mentioned it. I asked you what your thoughts were about the ruling of the ECOWAS court. And then and you delve into another conversation. And so I'm bringing it back to you again. Now, what do you make of it? They have, it has been very explicit. We're big on the rule of law. The court has ruled. It's a regional court, which we're part of. Yeah. I mean, we're part of the ECOWAS community. And then there's been a judgment saying you have to disregard, you have to discard it. That particular act, you know, the cyber, criminal, uh, the cyber crime act, it's in contravention of the law. It's in contravention of human rights. It's, an, it's, it's arbitrarily, it's unlawful. And they have given their ruling. And they are saying that two things are involved. You amend or delete it entirely. There's no respect whatsoever because no that has not been respected. Thing. So I ask you again, you, does it even make any sense? No, it doesn't. I, I'm just telling you this now. You made mention of a, of a point now. I say no treaty, no law, or act are made in isolation. You just made mention of the law says that you either amend or delete that section of the constitution. And we have to look at our peculiarity. Law is made by... Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I bring yeah. you back again to the Supreme Court judgment, which, I mean, the Supreme Court ruling that we have had. And you are also, I'm sure that you're also part of the people who said that the, the court, because whatever ruling that the court gives, because the court is supreme or the laws of the court should be abided, then it should be respected. Yes. So, I mean, you are now saying we should con consider and what? I should we, should we as a nation, excuse me, should we as a nation not have respected from 2020 the ruling of the um, ECOWAS court? No, this is it. The ruling of every uh, APS court, not even just APS court, regional court of West Africa now. So to, that of a ruling is binding. And I told you that this is the word is of the ruling, that is the letter of the law. It said those law that infringe on human rights should either be de deleted or amended. I now said on my own personal uh, opinion, I felt such law should be amended to reflect our reality as a nation. I now say that in human rights, in human rights, is a two-way traffic. Excuse that me, is sir. any Excuse law me, that says that you should, yeah. Excuse me, sir. My question to you is, what does it make of us from 2020 that we have not implemented the ruling of the regional court of the ECOWAS? Thank Which you, is also in line with your thoughts. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. What does it make us yes. as a country, yes. giant of Africa? I'm with you. It doesn't speak well of us as a nation that we are a serial abuser of court processes. That is even be the APS court or a regional court as the case may be. Yeah, you getting my point. So the idea now is that such ruling, 2020, uh, from 2020 to now is a lot uh, like three years ago. Such ruling should also be looked into. But you must understand, the uh, ECOWAS court does not work like the normal uh, court you have in this country. Your representative has to prepare the same bill again. Either you are appealing the same, you, you have a case of uh, saying that oh, this is what we have been doing or this is what we are doing as a nation. An executive order, the president has the right to also send down executive order down to the um, National Assembly saying that social, social law should be looked into. Are you getting my point? But my point remains this. Yeah. So these rules are not made in isolation. And each of these, when you look at it, you have to look at the merit. I, I get your point. Rule more, you must rule more. It's not a, 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 a shawarma that is served on the table. You must obey a rule that it serves you right or not. But in my own personal opinion, I believe that uh, human rights or which, uh, whichever right we are discussing should have a two a, a two waiting. That is, you look at the merit of the law, you look at where it should be amended, and if it is possible, we can even go on to what. Uh, Suleiman Adamu, uh, Suleiman Akonde, I'm that. sure that if you're very explicit with the ruling of that particular court, the regional court, it was very explicit, is simplicita in the words of the legal practitioners. Uh, he suggested that you either delete or amend, and that's very simple. So again, we're still having a conversation. Then we, then we still have to, we still have to get to a point where we're asking, you know, where a civil society would have to then poke the government, you know, as to respecting or acting accordance to the tenets of a democracy, and especially when you know you're a big figure in the continent. Um, again, uh, just before we call, call the conversation or just call it a wrap at this point in time, I'd like to ask you now, uh, just recently what 
Sarah is asking is that there be an executive bill to that effect. What do you think? Do you think that that's going to be, you know, a reality? Do you think that this government, just a few more months before they get out, do you see that as a thing? They have also made several requests asking that all charges be dropped against those who have been arrested, journalists, activists, and what have you. And uh, to that effect also, asking the CBN of recent time to withdraw that particular fine, uh, the NBC, on channels television. Yeah, it's unfortunate that um, it has to get to that that um, uh, a government agency starts using um, fine on uh, media houses. And I told you, any act that stifles the media space should be condemned by all over our democracy. So I am of the greatest opinion that the NBC should uh, withdraw such a um, um, fine against uh, Channel TV and at the other time, and, and also look at the a lot of journalists that have been. Um, uh, lock up or um, being um, being um, sued for one uh, thing or the other. I think that's the best thing to do. But at the same time, I have my point. I believe that we should also treat the part of practicing responsible journalism, whereby the rights of others are respected. The peace of the country is also put at the foremost of um, everything we do. And also anything that threatens our national security should not also be given the space or the other uh, 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 to try or uh, uh, or even the uh, the the, uh, the head to uh, to try. Well, uh, Suleiman Akonde, we have to go at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We do appreciate you and appreciate your time as well. Thank you for having me. That's the size of it this morning on The Breakfast. We take a break. When we return, we'll look at the fact that Labour Union has vowed to mobilise workers against Tunubu's government uh, come 1st of June or in June uh, as against the removal of subsidy. Please stay with us.